High, heavenly, blessed you within. You gon' be A1, whatever atmosphere you're in. The world see it like you're gullible and stupid, and to make it like you're suckers and you're foolish. But open up that New Testament and see the way you're shy, you're moving. They must feel the same way about them too, then. This for the lover, the one come up off the sweater on they back. Go, go down in they pocket for they last. Ain't none above you. The one that led this repentance, forgiveness, to help your enemy up out of trap. Praise a higher for you. In the world where nobody don't care, you a hidden treasure cause you're rare that part yeah faith proven in a role that we playing if we say we ain't able we a cane this is for the lover ain't none above you cause if it wasn't for you the whole entire world would be in trouble guess who the father sent for when we suffer he sent the lover in you wouldn't be nothing but a bunch of malice and pain selfishness and greed stop at your name and one day he's gonna give you forever he's gonna give you Know why the biggest heart get done your coldest? Because the father get the biggest of his task to his strongest soldiers. They would have folded if he put it on their shoulders. So your reward will be huge when it's over. When Christ comes, you the one gon' shine. Cause Christ a lover too, he put it all on the line. Everybody benefiting, but you never get your just due. That's cause the new world that comes for you. Uh, and Yasha Allah, I love you. I do anything for you. I drive across the country to hug you. And when it come to enemies, I ain't got none. Wish the whole world could feel the love of the Father. Don't wanna see you down. I hate it when you frown. Work to see you smile, even if it's for a little while. I know your heart could change, cause mine did. Nah, I wasn't always like this. But this is for the lover, ain't none above you. Cause if it wasn't for you, the whole entire world would be in trouble. Guess who the father sent for when we suffer? He sent the lover in you. Wouldn't be nothing but a bunch of malice and pain. Selfishness and greed stop at your name. And one day he's gonna give you forever. He's gonna give you. Well, a ho ho. For the lover, ain't none above you. Cause if it wasn't for you, the whole entire world would be in trouble. Guess who the father sent for when we suffer? He sent the lover in you. Wouldn't be nothing but a bunch of malice and pain. Selfishness and greed stop at your name. And one day he's gonna give you forever. He's gonna give you. What? What? I will what that mean? And that means you give me your man, no woman. I love you all. I need you to live forever and always. Yeah, keep on loving out there, those who get this. The love of many shall wax cold. Don't let them turn you cold. Can't keep your heart warm. That's who the remnant is, I believe. Those who know how to love. As you can see, it ain't doing nothing out here but just getting colder and colder. And you the only hope this world got. The world is in trouble without you. We gotta continue to bring forth this remnant. That's the greater work that Yeshaya was talking about that we would do. And it's by the love. Love conquers it all. I dug out some literature. Let's bust it down real quick. See if we can't convert another one or two right fast for the strike at read, read, read the Bible. Matthew 5 and 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So how do you exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? By the love I am, they lack love. They knew the law, they did the law. They pushed the law on the whole land, all that. They penalized people for the law. They docked and taxed for the law. They did all that. They stoned people for the law. They got swallowed up in the letter of the commandment and forgot the spirit of the commandment. They was hunkered down so tough on the commandments, but what about the part of the commandments that say to love your brother? See, they forgot that part. So if you run around all day, every day, upbraiding people about the law, but you won't go down in your pocket for them or in any way contribute to help feed them and to sustain them and increase them, then your righteousness ain't exceeding the righteousness of the Pharisees. You in it for the browbeat. If you could see a man thirsty and starving, and you say, nah, I ain't buying him nothing, no, nope, because it's the Sabbath, then that's what a Pharisee would do, huh? And your righteousness will not exceed theirs. If you could see a widow or the fatherless in need of help, but you say, nah, they be doing this wrong and doing that wrong. They be breaking this law, so I ain't helping them because of all that sinning they be doing. Then it's the love that you're rejecting. You see that? And your righteousness will not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees who lack love. I am. What if the Most High did that to us? Precept. Get it again. Let's look at something. Matthew 5 and 44 through 45. But I say unto you, what Yeshia say unto us, what? Love your enemy. Love your enemy. I'm telling you, listen, this is one of them things here that if you don't do it, 
You will never know why the gospel is telling you to do it. You will never put that cherry on top of your law. You will never complete your law. That's what it means when it says love fulfills the law. Nor will you ever be able to say that you've been fully obedient to the law. So therefore, I love my enemy. It was hard to adjust to, but out of my love for the Most High, I did it. See, that's the thing. If you love the Most High, you got to love your brother. Your love for the Most High should spill over to the people that's in front of you, huh? So now today, I don't struggle with that. I can see past whatever problem I got with somebody that called themselves my enemy. I look at them and I see they struggle, huh? I know those struggles. They same hurt and pain, I know that hurt and pain, huh? And I know what led me to feel that struggle and that hurt and that pain, but I look at them and I wonder what's making them feel it, huh? What's bringing them to behave the way that they behave? And I be wanting to kill whatever we going through and jump in there with them and tackle that with them, kind and help them. Like, never mind this goofy disagreement and animosity that you and me got going on. I, how can we conquer them pride and envy and them hate demons that got you by your neck? Con, I be wanting to go to work. Go in the prayer and the laying on the hands with them right there on the spot. I don't see them as no enemy of mine. I see somebody that's lacking the love. Somebody that's damaged. Somebody who disappointments in life got the best of them at that moment and about to drag them to hell, con. That's what I see. I see them down there a million years later still on fire, burning, regret, not learning any better when they had the chance, con. That's what I see. Them down there still frying and cooking, no rest, ain't been to sleep in a million years. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Ain't no pillow down there. And I don't want that for nobody. I don't care what they done did to me. Man, forget our little beef. Even here a couple months, couple years, whatever go by, and you don't feel the same about a person no more, huh? So imagine a million years later. Man, listen, let's forgive that. Bury our hatches, huh? And be in the kingdom somewhere a million years later. Ruling, huh? After we didn't drug ourselves through this cold-blooded earth and got elected, huh? But in order to do that, we first got to do what? Bless them that curse you. We got to bless them that curse us. Do good to them that hate you. We got to do good to them that hate us. We can't overcome evil with more evil. Romans 12. 17, right? Recompense no man evil for evil. That means pay no man back for the evil that he done did to you. All fighting fire with fire do is make a bigger fire, huh? It's gonna spread and involve more people, right? So that in its totality is destruction of your soul, your enemy souls, and souls that didn't even have nothing to do with it. See what I'm saying? The evil done won all kind of souls at the end of that road. Nah, we gotta fight fire with water, huh? Put it out. Put the whole fire out. Read no. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And pray for those that despite us and use us. Huh? And persecute you. And those that persecute us. Why are we doing that? Why are we praying for people that do these things to us? Because they about to go to hell for it. That's why. That's why we pray for them. Keeping ourselves blameless in the equation. Huh? And in that patience we possess our soul. You see that? That's why we do good to people even though they may not deserve it. Because we trying to keep our own nose clean. Let's get this punchline. This the whole reason why we came to the scripture right here. 45, let's get that. 45, that ye may be children of your father, which is in heaven. Kapow, this is how we duplicate the acts of the most high, our father in heaven, huh? This is how we be like him. This is how we stay in the family business, right? Like if my pop is a carpenter, chances are, I'm going to end up being a carpenter, right? I'm going to be elevated in the knowledge of carpentry because that's what my daddy do, huh? That's the family business. I'm going to take after him. He is the one who raised me and taught me. I'm going to follow in his footsteps. What if he a goat herder? Then I'm going to know everything there is to know about goat herding, ain't I? Okay, then. Well, our father is in the business of blessings. I know when we come into this Hebrew truth and we learn about the repercussions of the Most High, that's all we start to see. But believe it or not, he's doing more blessing than cursing. Believe that. So how can we say that we are his children and we ain't in the business of blessing? How to give a blessing? How to receive a blessing? And do the things that bring about blessing? Con not knowing how to maintain and how to keep blessings, right? Okay? Punchline. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil land on the good. Cub bang, another punch. The father bring the son up on the evil land the good he blessing them both ain't he okay then that's the way we gotta be the condition somebody in should not determine whether or not we bless them what else our father do and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust and he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust sun and rain bring us food huh we can't grow food and eat without that no vegetation would grow our cattle that chew the cud would starve to death and die off like we'd all be dead you see that that's our father's business that's what he about 
So we got to get about that and have knowledge in that. That's how we enjoy life, let alone endure. When we in the business of this, we can't wait to get up in the morning and go about our day. Blessing and being blessed. Doing the Father's work, huh? We ain't mad and sad and angry and confused and fearful of everyday functioning and what negativity may come our way, etc. Right? I don't care what your reasoning is. If you feeling those emotions, you ain't blessed. That's a hard life and a curse. That's why all the knowledge you know ain't washing them emotions away from you. That's why your heart ain't changing. That's why your mind ain't changing. That's why you ain't being renewed in your mind. It don't matter how much knowledge you get. It don't matter how well you can speak. It don't matter how many you waking up. It don't matter how many words you think you got, none of that. That's what 1 Corinthians 13 is trying to tell us. If you ain't adopting that love, then you will not be converted. You will stack all of that stuff up to the roof and still be miserable in life. That's what's happening in our community. This is everything Hamashiach was trying to get them Pharisees to see. And we are repeating the steps of them Pharisees and our righteousness will not exceed theirs. You see that? Why? Precept, get it again. Let's go to that. Acts 3 and 19. Repent ye therefore. Okay, once we repent, right? And be converted. Then we gotta be converted. How do we know we've been converted? That your sins may be blotted out. Because we start blotting our sins out. That's how. You ain't blotting out sins just because you pick up the law and gospel. Nah, that just prevents you from committing some of the further sins. But you still gonna miss some as you learn, right? What about in your times of weakness where you fail? How you gonna cover those and go back and get those, huh? What about your past sins? That's the multitude of sins. How do you cover those? We know by 1 Peter 4 and 8 that by love and charity, we cover those multitude of sins, right? Okay, bang, there it is there. So without the love, we will never cover those sins. You're basically still building a tab, baby, and your righteousness will not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And you know what that means? That means you haven't fully repented. You're playing with the Most High at this point. Yeah, you repented with your mouth, but your life didn't change. Your heart didn't change. Your mind didn't change. So what repentance? Repentance where? Where have you repented, con? Nah, you still standing in the same condition you was in when you got the truth. You ain't repented. You ain't converted. Your sins are not being blotted out. And your righteousness will not exceed the righteous of the Pharisees. Why? Why I say that like that? We know. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Most High. That's why, because when the refreshing come from the Most High, our power, right? That's this awakening. And when it's time of refreshing come, you didn't jump on that. Time we gotta jump on every aspect of it and milk it. We can't be cherry picking and choosing now. We gotta take it all. All that the Father is offering and waking us up with. So how we gonna sidestep the love part? Y'all y'all know we need the love. Nobody on this earth need the love like we need the love. Am I right or wrong? If I'm off, let me know. Who else in this world been dogged out like we've been dogged out? By others and each other. So how we not gonna accept the love and receive the love and return and give back the love? How? That's the Father doing that for us. Same way how he refreshing all this other wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It just said, when the time of refreshing shall come from thy power. So it's him refreshing us. It's him doing that for us. Trying to bring it all back to it. So if we refuse any part of it, then we will not be fully refreshed. So we done refuse the adoption of this love and you look around and we still mad, ain't we? We ain't refreshed we still sad. We know who we are, but we still fearful and scared of everything. Still fleeing when no man pursue it. What you running from? What you trying to get away from? Cause we wasn't fully refreshed. Why you ducking and hide? Because love cast out fear. But you shun the love. That's why you still scared of everything and feel like everything is a threat to you. Fleeing when no man pursue it. That's a faith issue, family. Where's all this faith that you supposed to done picked up? We ain't taking advantage of this awakening. We ain't taking advantage of when the Father shall refresh us. We still goofy in the scriptures and confused. Got a whole Bible in our hand and still blowing it and receiving it out of context. Trying to make it fit our agenda. All this faith and works that the heaven done made available to us. All that anointing that set our fingertips when we woke up to this truth. When we still ain't refreshed in the love? What? We still big and bad. Pride on the honey. The little knowledge that we did accept got us all puffed up. We the ultimate Hebrew now, ain't we? Them refused all this love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith, right? Meekness and patience, peace, fruit of the spirit, right? But we the ultimate Hebrew though. With all this divine power and blessed heritage, right? Then we get around the corner somewhere and the smallest little piece of nothing got us acting the total fool in the streets. Come on, man. I, come on, I, I, why? Showmanship a mess. Mad, sad, angry, confused, and fearful. 
communicating life, right? How the creator of the heaven earth, the sea and all the things in them, your father and your emotions is a mess. A worn out saint. I mean, that's what it's looking like, ain't it? Step into somebody else's shoes and look at you and think about what they see, okay? And if you say what they think don't matter, then how you gonna bring them to your father? Them the people you supposed to be saving and you in a worse condition than them, how? Why do I need your God? Look at you, right? And I know how that sounds, but I mean, that's why we got this book. It's all in this book. Everything we lack is in the book. I mean, the father didn't miss a stroke. I am. It's all about the purpose that you use this book for. We gotta take advantage. Whatever you put into this book, this book is gonna put into you. Whatever you surrender on to this book, this book is gonna surrender back to you. It's all in here. You gotta take advantage. So let's punchline this solution with you. Matthew 18 and 3. Verily I say unto you, I say to you strongly, except ye be converted. Except you be converted. How do we be converted? And become as little children. Cup, bang, boom, pow. There it is. There we gotta become as little children. Unless we become as little children, what? You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this is how important becoming as little children is. This ain't no joke, family. Everything riding on this. Become as little children or you ain't got no kingdom coming, baby. You going in that pit we got to become a child again you ever seen a child how a parent can refuse a child anything and that child still won't give up on that